Hello, everyone. This is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm very excited because we have Diane Gilman with us today. Yes, the <laughs> famous Diane Gilman. And today she's going to talk about being a silver haired influencer and an Asian disruptor. And she is here today to give us some great insights about growing older and making yourself a leader in today's world and standing out from, from the rest and not to be afraid and be proud of who we are. So Diane, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do, because you, you are truly an amazing woman. Well, thank you. Gosh, it's so nice to be here. Um, Okay, so from the time I was a tiny little girl, three years old, I knew what I wanted to do, which was fashion. That was very unique because I was born in 1945. And I kept telling my mother and father I wanted to be in fashion somehow. I wanted to work. But that wasn't what good girls did, especially not good Jewish girls. Mm -hmm. Good Jewish girls went to college basically to meet a husband and he did all the work. So <laughs> this was not uh this was not a goal for me and um I wound up having to leave home to pursue my dreams. So I'm very used to barriers. But I'll tell you what, the age barrier, ageism, whoo, that is a barrier that needs an army to knock it down. And when I say ageism disruptor, I don't want to sound like I'm some wild old lady, you know, who's who's going around whacking people over the head that don't appreciate age. But I'll tell you what, ladies, it is International Women's Day coming up soon. Yes. We are 50% of the workforce. Yet we only get 75% of the same jobs pay that a man gets. We are also, all together, as an age group, over 50% of America. America is now officially a gray nation, which means the majority of its population is 50 plus. Okay, where's everything for us besides medical drugs? Uh, let's just talk about my industry, fashion. Obsessed with youth. My whole basis for success was turning 5960, having a pudgy body with a big rubber tire around the middle and thinking, I can't get into jeans anymore. What's with this? I designed jeans for famous rock and roll stars in the 60s and the 70s. Huh? So I'd make one for myself. My body measurements are totally different from industry standards. I love them so much. I think, hmm, wouldn't millions of women like to have this experience? So I pitched it. They said, okay, we'll give you an hour. It was outrageous. They sold out in like 5,000 pairs, sold out in three minutes. I did that for a few years. <clears throat> I'm number one, I'm number one. I'm, I said, just smash your all sales records. Middle-aged jean, right? Design a middle-aged top that covers that spare tire, that's selling millions. Then I go to QVC and pitch an international business because my thought was, it's all hormones. Mm -hmm. So whether you're eating fish and chips in London or a plate of pasta in Milan or schnitzel in Germany or snails, yeah, I guess snails are good, in France, you're still facing the same problems, yeah. which is a, a body that proportions itself differently. And no one in the industry is making fashion that truly fits us. Yes. Go to number one everywhere. Do that year after year after year. And then six years ago, diagnosed with breast cancer, sort of have to change my priorities, have to take a year off work, change my life. But do you know, in the end, I sold my company and my name. I went on working for a couple of years afterwards on air. But do you know, the minute I was gone, the first thing they said was, Ugh, who wants to design jeans for old ladies, fat old ladies? We want a 30-year-old customer. Can you believe it? 
Yeah. My whole foundation, my whole individualized, this is so focused. Fish in the barrel concept of design for a middle-aged woman and make the measurements for a middle-aged woman. No interest. Wanted to go right back to youth obsession. So, you know, I guess I was in two businesses, fashion and television, that were not very forgiving for aging and very, very focused on youth. Mm -hmm. But somehow... The audience for Tell Retail is growing older with me and they're appreciating it. Yeah. And you know, to this day, I think we remained the only fashion label that actually said, you younger girls have a million labels to buy, friend. This is for us girls over 45, 50. Yes. It was proprietorial, it was personal. It was a very emotional purchase for a woman to get her sexy back. Oh, for sure. And yeah, so it wasn't such a hop and skip and jump. It wasn't that easy getting from tele retail and fashion, and I did have a voice in tele retail, to going into social media and my own YouTube channel. You know the whole drill. Yeah. And and saying, you know what, what was the essence of my career? Well, the really best part of my career was when I started very personally designing for me and then translating it for an ever expanding huge audience. I think in 13 years, we're now at 22 or 23 million genes sold. The audience is there. The audience is grateful. But now, for all the ladies in the audience, there's something else we have to do. Mm -hmm. We need to stand up for ourselves again. Yeah, I hate to use the word disruptor, but it's used all the time. Ageism is pernicious. Ageism is toxic. Ageism is not the truth. Ageism needs to be smashed so we can be liberated and be seen by society as useful, active, necessary, worthwhile, with a valued voice that should be listened to. Yeah. You know, uh, my whole thing always, Stacy, is follow the money. But right. it doesn't apply here. I don't get it. You know, they see it in the drug industry. And if I see one more commercial <laughs> with a silver haired fox taking Viagra <laughs> with a blonde 30 years younger than him, I'm going to be like Elvis and shoot the, <laughs> shoot the tail on TV. <laughs> boom, boom. But there is life for females beyond 50. And, um, yeah. A lot of us, like me, because I meet a lot of us, like you, Stacy, and me, who have something to say. And I'll tell you what, it is a daunting task. Yes. It is so difficult to pivot societal views to seeing a part of life where you are no longer prolific in having children. Well, guess what? You just lessened your worth. Yeah. By about 99%. What are your views on this? I feel I feel that our our society has been really hypnotized by the media, the social media ah. and and it is they don't see what is real and they don't realize that a lot of it's fabricated. It's all about making the hits, it's all about making, you know, you know, what's going to get the most attention, but they're not really, they're not showing the truth. You know, they don't realize that a lot of these, these young girls are taking all these pictures and they're getting attention and stuff like that. But a lot of these girls are showing off their body parts and they're, they're, yeah. and they're put, pulling themselves down to me that 
I feel like they're taking our society and they're taking women and they're degrading women. You know, is that the only way you're going to get hits? Is that you going to show your body parts to people you don't even know? And what happens in, in 20 years when those body parts are not in, in the same standard and they're starting to sag? And also, how good do you feel about yourself as a person if you're going to do that? And then you don't see any young, older women doing things like that, you know, and, you know, but, you know, we have so much to offer. We are much more valuable. And also, you know, they only show things that people want to see. They don't show what's really important. They're every, you know, TV, um, you know, social media, they're always worried about what's going to make the, you know, what's going to bring the most commercial money in. For, for oh, them. for sure. For what's the for ratings, sure. you know, and that's all they care about. It's not what we need. It's it's all about the dollar bill, you know. And, but, and you know, I don't want to be a golden girl. No. Honestly. No. Somebody compared me to the golden girls the other day and said, oh, you should have been on the golden girls. You would have been my favorite golden girl. And I thought, no, please, God, how do I answer this? I don't <laughs> want to be a golden girl. Okay. I want to be like a, a well-aged author, well-aged female executive. Well I want to be something woman that's accomplished. Yeah. I want to be something where I'm still building bridges. I'm still climbing mountains. Yeah. I'm still using my imagination and, and my taste levels. And I think it's incredible. You know, when I stopped designing um, and I loved designing, but I really wanted to, I'd already had two books out, just gotten the second book out and wanted to have that experience again. I mean, I really thought, whoa, what a great artistic form. And I really enjoy it. And it's, writing's becoming my happy place. But when I looked back on what I had done in fashion, I realized what an anomaly I was. And I also realized that it is very, very difficult to get people in general who have thought about a period of your life in a certain way as a decline yeah. with no accomplishments except, you know, three quarters of uh, our government are old white guys. But <laughs> beside that, you know, yeah. I didn't say old white girls. I said old white guys. Um Men just seem to have a much easier road to aging. For instance, Robert De Niro, 80 right. years old, has a baby. With a woman 60 yes. years, his junior, Al Pacino, 83 years old, just had a baby. With somebody 55 years his junior. What if that was reversed? What do you think the commentary would be? Oh, forget so, about it. Yeah. How come this is so unfair for us? I don't like it. I mean, I'm I have no buddy standing behind me, you know, writing out checks and saying, just talk about how much you dislike this. It really, in my own way, isn't to my advantage to want to be an ageism disruptor. But it is from my point of view, because I'm living these years. Yeah. I want to love them. Yeah. I want to make the most out of every minute. And trust me, as you get older, you're going to see how infinitely precious life is. So do the most with it you can. Yeah. No, it doesn't mean I'm going to be at Studio 54 every night until 4 a.m., but <laughs> I can still have fun, just different kinds of fun, and yeah. do and have a life with purpose and also a legacy. And the legacy is kindness, and the legacy is female progress. And I have to say, I just did a solo um, podcast for uh, International Women's Day and thought to myself, I'm not going to be like all, oh, pom-poms, cheerleader, women are so great, women are such a good place, oh my gosh, we've made so much progress, yay, yay, yay. I told it like it is. 
Yeah. This is a sad moment for us. And we are not making progress. You know, um, actually, on HSN QVC, when I had my gigantic light bulb moment and success with a middle-aged gene, was the only time that they had a female CEO. And she got it. She understood it. Yeah. And so I just looked up statistics for women's International Women's Day, and they said, used to be 12%, but now it's down to 8%, only 8% of Fortune 500 and like companies have a female CEO. And out of that, 80% of the companies that gave those women their jobs were failing. So women weren't even given a successful company to hop onto and grow. They were given a deeply flawed company Wow! to turn around and fix. Yeah, this is a very particular time for us. Mm -hmm. And whether you are in your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, your 80s, or beyond, my good friend Iris Apfel just passed away a couple of days ago at 102. Wow. And that was, she was a character. Somebody said to me, you didn't, I gave a little memorial for her and they said, oh, you didn't cry. And I said, Iris was tough as nails. I mean, crying was not in her vocabulary, her tool book. Yeah. She didn't care, man or woman. She was Iris. She didn't care. You didn't want to listen to her. Well, then you were pretty dumb. Because she was really smart. And somebody else would listen to her. We have to take the attitude that Iris Apfel took, which is, you're worth it. And you're valuable. And you're unique. And you've got something to contribute. I mean, otherwise, what do you do? Just fade away? Exactly. I don't want to fade away. How about you? No. I don't want to fade away. And when I do go, I want my name to be remembered. And I want my name to be remembered with a smile. Yes. I want anybody who remembers my name to smile and say, that woman really worked hard to do some good. And, you know, because my invention for fashion was so personal, built for me to begin with and then shared with the world, I got a sisterhood of about 650,000 um, listeners and audience at HSN QVC. And it was a sisterhood. It was women who appreciated the bonding, who had something to rally around, who saw someone in me that believed in them and believed in in their goodness and and their worth. And um, so that's what I want to do again. But now, because I'm not constricted by network television, which every other minute, I swear, in my ear, and you'll appreciate this, having worked on network TV, every other minute it was, Diane, stop telling that story. Diane, you're going way over on this item. I was a storyteller. I I knew Mm -hmm. that the point of selling on TV was giving very personal, yes, um, very personal descriptions of what the clothing did for me because I love my clothing. I loved my designs. They were built for my body too, and I wore them all the time. So it is pretty natural to jump from that into another category right um which which is you are expressing your life experiences but you're activating the solutions whether you want to take the solution or not i'm offering it to you right in my podcast in my books and oh i i just think the work we're doing stacy is really important yes i do too I think we really need to make a statement because I really feel like 
the middle-aged woman is, is, is non-existent. They're, they're not enough women showing their face. They're not enough women that feel proud of who they are. They get to a certain age and they mm. try to hide it and, and they don't, and they're going through struggles and the hormones, your body's changing, your metabolism is getting lower. We know it's very hard. Your cortisol levels are getting higher. It's hard to lose weight and people are struggling. And instead of, instead of just appreciating who we are and working with it, people are feeling down on themselves, not feeling worthy of themselves. And we should be the opposite. We should feel good yeah. about ourselves. Yeah. But you know, that comes with, you've got to look to the field of entertainment. Mm -hmm. for some support i agree and if you don't want to be in business like i love the fact that for um hbo night country jody foster is 60 63 years old yeah. she was mm -hmm. a star thank god finally you can get an attractive but not the same right female star who's the boss who's effective who's i i thought that was great i thought that I whole love twist it. Yes. On the two detectives, both being female and very kick ass female yes. mm -hmm. was was so appropriate. But you get very little of that. And so yeah. when I came out of breast cancer, nobody knew how to do my hair. Because nobody in their right mind said, you know, I think I'll just go natural and be all white. They every single white haired woman in Manhattan is has got blonde streaks. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, I asked a friend of mine, very, very, uh, married to a very famous um, rock and roll photographer. I said, so what color is your hair? And she said, white. And I said, but you don't want it like mine. And she said, oh, I'm not ready for that yet. Well, she's only three years younger than me. <laughs> but nobody wants to really admit their authenticity because it's not rewarded. It's not rewarded. And and we have we need celebrities and we need people who are leaders to say it's fine to age. It's you're beautiful. You know, 50 plus is is a beautiful thing. We should feel good about ourselves and not try to hide. Shouldn't it. we? We yeah, should. You're actually surviving. You are a survivor. You are chosen. I really believe that you are tough. You have climbed a million mountains, fought a million battles, and obviously come out pretty on top with most of them because you're still here. But here's the difference. You're now in a part of life where there is kind of an expiration date. I mean, you know that is there. You can't put it off anymore. Right. Right. So shouldn't life be ever more precious? Shouldn't mm -hmm. you have that? I don't want to call it urgency in a bad way. So I'm going to call it immediacy. Yeah. To either be part of a group that's helping. Yes. Or start that in whatever way you can. But... I think it is draconian. I think it's like middle age, middle ages. And like, I'm talking about 11 or 1200, not, not 2024. Right. Where you just think the minute you're not going to have kids anymore, you're just, you've done your part in life, especially when there's so many women who actually chose to pursue a career and not have a family, it has really evened itself out. I think about 40% of American households, a woman lives alone and has chosen not to start a family in her yeah. lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, but we seem to stick to a very, what I would call gold standard point of view. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. You, I remember when Barbara Bush gave a speech, oh my God. And she said, now, ladies, and I think that she was actually speaking at commencement for Sarah Lawrence or something, some yeah. really prestigious um, college. And she said, so, ladies, I want to congratulate you all on getting your law degrees. But you remember, 
having dinner on the table at 6 p.m. and baking those chocolate chip cookies. That's what you're really all about. And that is what's most important. And I thought, seriously, they let this woman give a commencement speech? <laughs> this is like, <laughs> wow, how demeaning. Yes. So here we are, and we are half the workforce. We are under total siege and attack. How could it be? When is the last time? I just want to ask you, Stacey. Sure. When is the last time you went to someone's house? It could have been a housewarming. It could have been a baby shower. It could have been an anniversary gift to your parents. It could have been anything. You gave them a really beautiful present that was extremely meaningful to them. And about 10 years later, you came back and said, hey, do you remember that great that great anniversary party we threw for you. I want the present back. Give it back to me now. <laughs> Give it back. I'm going to just stand here and scream until I get it. Hmm. How could we let this happen to us? And what right. are we going to do about it? I don't care what your, as a matter of fact, I don't want to know what your political affiliation is. But if you love having things taken away from you, we have very little to talk about. Mm -hmm. And if you think to yourself, stepping backwards into time is it's not going terrible. to solve the problems no. in this country. No. I almost feel like for the general population, concepts like global warming and the fact that if we don't do something uh, yes. like yesterday, we're not going to have a planet to live on a hundred percent in 70, yeah, 75 years. Yeah. And I'm being generous about that. Mm -hmm. And what do we think about taking away women's controls of their own body? That makes you feel good. You oh, nasty I was old man. Infuriated about that. Beyond, right? Infuriated. Listen, you cannot. I my personal opinion is everybody has the right to feel and think and have their own opinion, but don't inflict your opinion on other people's uh, lives. What is good for you does not mean it's good for everybody. If that's what you want to do as a person, that's fine and dandy. But for a society, everybody should have the right to choose what they want to do. And honestly, I just saw a sign recently at a um, protest. And it said, women plus fury equals power. So I would say to anybody out there that there is a commonality and a bridge between us being discriminated, women being super discriminated against with ageism and having our own bodily rights taken away from us get angry and that's fine but do something about it exactly and that's the problem most people get angry but they don't take the constructive way of making taking action in a constructive healthy way and how and would you take action for me i would probably take action i would either verbalize it i would share my opinion I would get people together and probably try to do something as a whole where we can think of something constructive that isn't, that would not hurt anybody, but yes. definitely would grab attention and, and would, it would, it would cause people to really have to really double think and maybe do something about it. Yeah. To you know, where they have to do something about it. When I, I and I sort of saw it coming. Okay. I would talk to women about it and they would say two things. Number one, well, I can't do anything about it. Well, you're right. As an individual, you cannot do anything about it. But as a group, yes. we can. And the second was, oh, it'll never happen here in America. Well, wake up. It's happened here. Yes. It's and, and, this, it, and it's getting snowballed. It's and it's IVF. Point. And now they want a federal ban on all birth control. My God, I couldn't even watch that 
Handmaid's Tale. It was so dark as a TV show. And I thought, why should I make myself miserable watching this? I'm so tense watching it every every, uh, episode. And now we're living it. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk specifically to the female audience and just say, you said it couldn't happen here, but it happened. Mm -hmm. And you watch and they've got an inch, they'll take a mile. Yes. What were we in the 60s and the 70s, even into the 80s? Right. We were a cohesive generation. Yes, we were. The largest generation on earth and powerful. Yes. Why? Because we had a voice and we had a spending pocket. So the first thing I would say is... You don't need to get political, but you do need perhaps to get educated. Yes. If there are groups or major brands out there, and there actually are two, uh, there are two major food brands I won't buy anymore because they're totally polluting, totally reinforcing global warming. Right. Just pick and choose where you spend your money. Yes. And start. I know that we were grouped together and marched together and resisted together and we changed society people yeah and i say starting with with yourself in your 50s today Mm -hmm. seek out ways to multiply yourself with like-minded people don't think you can do this alone i mean both stacy and i have podcasts Mine is too young to be old on uh, YouTube. I go after solutions for better aging, but I also get pissed off. Yeah. And think to myself, God, this is so unfair. And and what, if I had to say one bad thing about aging, I would say isolating. Mm-hmm. So know that that is a very dangerous trap to fall into. Yes. And for those of you... <laughs> Someone said to me the other day, I couldn't figure out how to do something on Google Drive. No surprise, trust me. <laughs> I'm so technologically um, ridiculous. They said, no, you're not techno moron. You're Amish. That's the new <laughs> word now. Oh, you're very Amish when it comes to tech. So if you're Amish like me when it comes to tech, learn just enough to be able to go on social media, look at different groups, see who you agree with. Yes. And and start to join in and have a voice because the real truth is, ladies, social media, which may look very scary to you or, or have so many choices or, actually was built for us older girls. Mm -hmm. You can do it at home. You don't have to travel out. You can pick and choose. You can be anonymous to begin with and then reveal yourself as you go on. It was made for us. Yes. Learn how to use it. Don't resist it. God, I was in a meeting the other day and um, we were talking about, uh, it was a women's club, pretty well known and talking about how to, um, get the word out there about a certain event and there were a thousand or 1200 members but you never see more than a couple of hundred and it was how are you going to locate how are you going to tell them all and and one woman raised her hand and said i just want you to know i hate email i have never given in and used email in my life and i don't think we should be emailing our members and everyone's looking at her like, really? What do you think we should be doing? Yeah. Well, I don't know, but I hate email. No, no, no. You have to give up on hating what you don't understand and open up and learn it. And every time I learn something new on the internet, it's like a whole new world. I yes. got more, more enrichment out of it. So as an ageism disruptor, and I hate that word because I'm really, uh, 
Maybe I'm a little disruptive, but not that much. Not that much. Um, That's okay. They called me the same thing. So they called me. Really? Yes. I got on Apple News. They wrote an article about me and they called me the healthcare disruptor. So. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> well, we all have to discuss uh, Medicare sometime, which was a <laughs> phenomenal nightmare for it. Only took me three and a half years to get it. Oh my God. <laughs> These are, you know, and and I would say too, very interestingly, that even the government agencies like Social Security and Medicare that are supposed to be catering to us, they're a nightmare to navigate. You have to have a genius mind and the patience of a biblical character yeah. to be able to wait these people out. And, and my God. Nobody ever told me when I was younger, if you don't use Medicare, you're going to get charged $1,500 a year, year after year. So by the time, so I thought, oh, I'm being a really good citizen. I'm still working, full-blown working, retired at 77. And then I finally can't get Medi Medicare. And it's because I owe this huge amount of money to Social Security. Why? Because I didn't use Medicare at the age of 65. Really? So I would say, in my own way, I'm a disruptor at all levels. Because it seems wrong to me. Really? I saved you guys all that money all those years that so you don't have to take care of me? And you punish me for it? Oh, all right. That would take me the rest of my life to figure out and beyond. So I think that... Um, as you come into this world of ageism in your 50s, even though we have so much more, just cosmetically, we can do for ourselves to stave off the reality. Yes. You still have to think to yourself, I don't want to be a granola grandma. I don't want to express inactivity and and a lack of productivity from now until when right and what where are the social guidelines and signs that are the yellow brick road to happiness after 50 and you suddenly realize there aren't any and you're going to have to lay down every stepping stone by yourself right do you feel that way yeah, I, I do. And and I think you made a good point before you talked about, you know, a lot of people fear what they don't know. You know, there are so many people who are afraid to take a step up because they don't understand. You know, they it, it's uh, there are so many people out there that are so fearful of so many things, but yet they don't yeah. understand, just like the woman with the email. You know, it, it, it's, oh like my God. In, it's like that in life in general, people don't understand things and they don't want to learn, but yet they have an opinion, you know, but they don't, you know, and those are the people most people go after, you know, but, you know, as an age disruptor, we have to realize if there's something that you don't understand, you research it and, and not to be afraid or embarrassed over your age. There's nothing wrong with getting older. But let's look, let's look at it. It's a, to me, it's a beautiful thing. I thought about it, 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 you know, when my children left the house and I became an empty nester, I was like, okay, what now? And then I thought uh, to myself, yeah. I, I, it's, this is a whole new beginning to a whole new life. You know, you can see it that way. For me, when I left television, I've been on TV for 30 years. I was still number one in fashion. People thought I was crazy. It's comfortable. You know how to do it. You're number one. Why are you leaving? You're out of your mind. You're... I just thought to myself, I did a life assessment, which you will do, especially if you've had a mortality-based disease like breast cancer. And I thought, okay, do I really love my life anymore? No. Am I bored? Yes. Is that logical? No. Do you care? No. <laughs> what do you want to do? What are you good at? And I thought, you know, I've developed communication skills. 
after 30 years on TV. Yep. I love the idea of podcasts, but this time I'm my boss. I can have the freedom. Yes. I want to bring on who I want to. I want to make the points that are important. And I always was pretty good at having a huge public uh, in agreement with me about what was important to them. So I did it. And now we're in the top 10 for over 55. Yeah, I'm very proud of that. We just received a gold award. I mean, you know what? And I'm having the time of my life. I love every minute of it. So if you were a risk taker when you were young, Mm -hmm. what the hell? What what have you got to lose? You know, that's exactly. what I say, honestly. Take your chances. And I think the other thing um, that's so great, at least for me, is when you stay in one place too long, it's all the same people year after year. I mean, you may not love these people. You may not have been the one that hired them, but you're the one that has to keep dealing with them and it can get very repetitive. Yeah. Well, you know, As well as me, when you're in podcasting, you meet so many new people Mm -hmm. and they've all got a point of view and they've all got an expertise and they're shooting off ideas to you that you may have never imagined before. And it's always food for thought. And that thought turns into energy and that energy can turn into activism and, and making a difference. So that's me. I'm out to make a difference. And you are, you have been. I hope so. I hope so. You have been for decades, you know. Yeah, different now. Just, I was amazed at how much of me I could move over and still leave the fashion there and say to myself, you know what? I love fashion. It's not the center of my life anymore, but if I miss it enough, I can always go shopping. (laughs) (laughs) that's what i did i love it i love it oh that is awesome now if you had to take everything we talked about today and you had to sum it up what would be the 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 the, a couple of good takeaways that you'd want to emphasize to the listeners i would say two things number one do not be afraid of aging do you know that statistically and biologically, your 70s are the, is the happiest decade of your life? My 70s, even though it included breast cancer, I will tell you what, breast cancer taught me a lot mm-hmm. and prepared me for this chapter of my life. Yes. So number one, I would say, be grateful for aging. Yeah. Do not see aging as a punishment. See it as a privilege yes it is like a fine meal to be savored yeah i have never ever had the experiences i've had lately a feeling that life is such a gift yeah and so precious and that you are chosen if you are here and and get another year and another do something with it do something who's to say you can't be great after all after all the years in fashion my light bulb moment when i just jetted off into the economic stratosphere was 60. nobody was no one nobody else can say they had their moment at 60 yeah. in fashion. Most people are over with by the time they're 35. Right. And they're discarded and it's somebody new. The only person I could ever equate to that was Coco Chanel, who actually, after being in exile for 20 years, was finally allowed back into Paris and designed the Chanel suit at the age of 72 years old. Wow. Yeah. So come on, follow Coco and me and Stacy, and say to yourself and make it your mantra, never too old, never too late, never stop dreaming. Yes, I love it. And I agree 100% with you. Yay. Yes. 
together. We are, we will, we ageism, we are the ageism, even though you don't like the word disruptor, we are, and we, sh we should be proud of it. And we need more people to come out and say, yes, okay. we do. Yes, we do. And we're not asking you to burn bras or, you know, do anything that is harmful in any way. But if you're not going to stand up and value yourselves, nobody else is. That's exactly. the hard lesson I learned. Yes. And we have to, we have to value ourselves and we have to tell people how beautiful people, you know, our age and older are, and, and, and it's okay to get older. And it's, and just because you get older, don't let yourself go. Cause I see that a lot too. in women, they let themselves go after a certain age, you know, you, you got to stay beautiful and, and you got to feel beautiful and you got to keep moving. And it's a good time to experience that too. And you've got the time now to experiment. I experiment every day with, different kinds of makeup, what am I going to do with my hair? It's white, it's different. And yep. so take, take a little bit of time and make it you time. Yes. Take a little bit of time and make it group time. Find groups you can be in that are women's groups that are supportive of the cause. And the cause is, I hate to sound like a, a hair color commercial, but we are worth it. Yes, Seriously. we are worth it. Find groups that it. believe that. And group voices are always louder than individuals. And um, thank you so much for having me on. My oh, gosh, you're very welcome. This. Yeah. I love this. And hopefully we'll have you on again. I'd love to have you on again. Yay. I would love it. Yes. This has been so wonderful. So ladies, be good. Be productive. Be grateful. Be happy. No one said it was easy, but it is worthwhile. It is. 100%. Yeah. Every minute of it. Every yeah. second of it. Well, Stacey, I feel like I made a new friend. Yes, you have. Oh, oh good. All <laughs> right. All right. So well, you have a you. great day. Thank you so much I for being on the show. You too. Thank right. you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.